I thought it might be handy to share some basic tips for getting started with video recording on your X-T3 or more or less any other Fuji X body for that matter. And then afterwards, we can share some more tips in the comment section below. Either the W126 or the W126S will do, frankly, unless you're shooting 4K for a long time, in which case the newer S range are better for heat control. Now, if you've got a USB power delivery battery pack, then you can run your T3 off that for longer shoots. As far as SD cards goes, most beginners will be fine with SD cards class three or V30 upwards. Only worry about V60 and above if you're going to use the higher bit rates. Now, of course, in this video, we're just focusing on the basics of recording, so don't worry too much. If you shoot handheld, then you'll want a lens with OIS, such as the 18 to 55 or the 10 to 24, unless you have a super steady set of hands. If you're using a tripod, a gimbal, or a body with IBIS, then frankly, any lens will do for starters. But maybe if you have the choice, you could try the 23 F2 or the 35 F2 to start off for smoother and quieter autofocus. Set the autofocus to AFC if you want to shoot vlog style or continuously focus on a moving subject while shooting. Face and eye detection is worth turning on to if it's a piece of camera such as I'm doing now. Manual mode is your friend, but what shutter speed and aperture do you choose? Well, there's a common rule that's called the 180 degree rule. Basically, this is shooting at a shutter speed double that of the frame rate you select to keep the footage natural. It's close to how our eyes sees and our brains processes what we see. So if you're shooting 4K, 30 frames per second, then ideally you'll choose 1 60th shutter speed. If you're shooting 1080p, 60 frames per second, then 1 1 20th shutter speed and so on. So double the frame rate to choose your shutter speed, basically. Then aperture to taste and ISO to nail the exposure after that. This all depends on the quality you need and also if your editing machine, your laptop or your computer can handle 4K footage. Now, 4K gives you a lot more room for editing, cropping, color corrections and so on, but of course, can involve more time and effort than you might want as a beginner. 1080 is perfectly fine for most of us. A frame rate as high as 60 frames per second is often overkill unless you plan to slow the footage down afterwards. This setting can give you a lot more potential for editing afterwards, but as beginners, it's probably not worth messing with just yet. Now, I don't even use this regularly, but sometimes I do very basic edits to the exposure from a video file. And again, that's a lesson for another day if you're interested. The X-T3 can produce even higher quality files, higher bit rates, etc. but we just wanna keep it simple as beginners. When it comes to picture profile, I tend to use ProNeg High with my preferred choices regarding color, sharpness, etc. And I'll put those up now in case for some reason you wanna pause and copy them to give them a try yourself. But remember, it's just a personal preference, so feel free to experiment. If audio is important to your recording, you can plug in a lav mic or a shotgun mic, then adjust the audio levels to make sure you get the signal right. Make sure that your mic levels are just above 20 or so on the X-T3 scale. If your audio hits zero, you're in danger of recording too loud and not getting a usable sound. You can switch on the mic level limiter if you're in danger of having some unwanted loud sounds to keep it simple. In your editing software, you can then bring the audio up to an industry standard level with no problem. Now, of course, if the X-T3 had a flip out screen like some of the other Fuji bodies, it may have competed on yet another level, especially with vloggers. If you're shooting yourself or just need a bigger screen to monitor your recording, a HDMI monitor is very handy and you can get them pretty cheap 
these days. You know, I've featured a couple, three, two, three on the channel. If you want to use the app, if you can, be aware it will record at the lowest setting possible on your camera. So for the X-T3, you'll end up with a 1080p 30 frames per second video file on the SD card. Give or take the dodgy app. This is a good option for a easy, simple video recording. To get started, try iMovie or for Windows, VSDC is well thought of. If you fancy getting deeper into it and doing more than just trimming, sequencing, etc., Hit Film Express or DaVinci Resolve are worth a look, or I use Final Cut by way of example. Obviously, the X-T3 offers way more for video shooters up to professional productions, but hopefully we've shared something that can help you get started. No doubt I've left something out, so if you have any tips for a beginner, share it in the comments section below. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you there.